good evening everyone am i audible I, uh, let me know whether I'm audible. Okay, yes, uh, this is. The different topic is uh, noise and uh, vibration. Previously, uh, we have discussed about uh, uh, different types of uh, ventilation, guards, etc. So today, we are discussing about noise and vibration. This is also a, uh, one of the topic in safety engineering one. Okay. I'm hope I'm audible. If yes, just put me in chat box so that we can continue the class. Okay, thank you. Yeah. If you see, uh, first of all, going to the noise and vibration, uh, we will understand how our uh, ear looks inside as well as outside. So what are the various parts which will be there inside our ear? So if you see in the right side or in the left side, so this is the, the visible part. So generally we can able to see this by our visual this thing so this is called as ear pinna it is called as ear pinna so inside it is going to connect with the temporal bone which is called the outer ear and also the hole or the path which is leading inside the ear that is called as ear canal then uh, we will have this ear drum like it's like a cover of the speaker then in the middle ear we will have uh, stapes as well as uh, milius then inner ear we will have the semicircular canals as well as vestibular nerves and also auditory nerves and also cochlea. The cochlea is the, the main part in the ear. Inside the cochlea, 
will have hair cells whenever you're exposing with the uh, higher noise levels then your inside hair cells get damaged due to resulting your loss your ability of hearing okay so man cheptunnatuga chevu anedi manaki ila kanipistundi edaithe ee bite kanapadutundo left side lo undo idantha gudano manaki visible ga ante manam chuste kanapade chevu anamata idantha gudano manaki chevu lokalu unde dani yokka amerika indulo manaki bone untundi ear canal antamo ear drum antamo ivanni gudano vividha ఏమంటారు పార్ట్స్ అంటే వివిధ రకాలైన విడిభాగాలు అంటే చెవి యొక్క విడిభాగాలు ఇందులో మేజర్ గా మనకి కోక్లియా ఒకటి ఇయర్ డ్రమ్స్ దీస్ ఆర్ ది మేజర్ టూ పార్ట్స్ విచ్ విల్ బి డిసైడింగ్ యువర్ ఎబిలిటీ ఆఫ్ హియరింగ్ ఓకే నౌ విల్ గెట్ ఇన్ టు ద టాపిక్ సో నాయిస్ వాట్ ఇస్ వాట్ ఇస్ మీన్ బై నాయిస్ ఎనీ గెస్ నాయిస్ అంటే ఏంటి what is mean by noise if you don't know just you can say no it is it is fine okay no problem we'll say it is simple if you see a music a music is a noise or not music is a noise yes okay what about others yes okay you know i'll make it clear a music with a less volume or a music in a uh, with a dj what is noise a dj is a noise or a music with a less volume is noise for the festivals you used to put dj okay music with the dj is noise okay fine dj is noise okay irregular fluctuation okay okay fine okay thank you so much so now we'll see what exactly noise means noise Sir, is a unwanted. sound yeah please somebody is giving an answer yes suresh unwanted or unwanted or harmful sound okay okay thank you if you see here noise is a sound but it is unwanted or undesired sound that is a sound without agreeable musical quality it is an annoyance and also interfere with the work efficiency and causes accidents hearing loss or the deafness depending upon its type and also period of exposure the noise means all sounds are not noise a sound that is without agreeable musical quality even though you are listening in music with a high volume it is not at all a quality it is not able to understand properly or it is annoying it's creating a disturbance which is resulting the workers efficiency because if there is a heavy noise 
two people are discussing about the controls in the process, if they are not able to communicate properly what to be done in the following shift or from A shift to B shift, he is taking his hand over because of heavy background noise in shop floor, he can't be able to hear the, the major the points or the important points during the handover. That may leads to accidents. Vibration means vibration is a physical factor which acts on human body by transmission of mechanical energy from sources of oscillations. Sources of oscillations in the sense a movement or circular motion or movement of any equipment or the parts of the equipment due to that it is a transmission of mechanical energy from various sources of oscillations okay that is noise and vibration if you see here these are the uh, permissible limits of a, a noise if you see you consider generally eight hours of a a day, it is in its regular working hours, leave about 6, leave about 3, what I am telling you for the easy uh, remembrance, so you can remember easily, okay. For example, if you see 8 hours, here it is 90 decibels, for 8 hours of work, you can expose up to 90 decibels, then 4 hours. Four hours in the sense, it became half of your working time. There you can expose up to 95. Then again, two hours. It means again, it came down to half of the previous working hours. So here it has increased another five decibels. In the sense, every decrease of half of the amount of your working hours here, you can increase your exposure to five decibels. In the sense, the less the time, the more the decibel you can expose. The more the time, the less decibels you have to expose. And then that day, prati naal gantle ki. Ine midhi gantle ki manaki ninety decibels sai na puru. Ne in dilo naal gantle panje iste ne nu ninety five hours ko expose avarcho. Na koke. Aaj ne two hours panje iste. I will expose 100 work to decibels work and expose our work. Then in one hour, up to 105 decibels work to change your work. Half an hour, up to 110 dB work to expose our work. Expose our work in the sense that is the permissible limit. For half an hour, you are permissible for 110 dB. More than that, you should not expose to that noise. Any doubt in this? Are we clear? For easy remembrance, you can remember 8 hours, 90 decibels. Then half of the time, you can increase your 5 decibels of exposure. Okay. Now we'll see what are the, uh, the hazards of the noise. If you see a moderate sound, the frequency above 4000 hedges is good, but the sound or noise is hazardous. The frequency is good, the noise is very hazardous. If you see the harmful effects of noise is depend on the few factors. Like previously we have seen ergonomics, it will differs on various factors like the distance he travels, the position he works, the, the weight he handles, the controls he handles. The similar way here also, there are many factors which will trigger for the effect of noise. One is noise frequency and intensity or total length of exposure, which means how many uh, minutes or how many hours or how many days he is exposing. Length of exposure at a time, for example, in one day, one day, how many hours he is exposing. A distance from the noise source. So, for example, here it is the source or I can say speaker if the person is close by and another person is here. So definitely a person A have more exposure than person B or if you say person C is here, he'll have 
very less exposure than person A and B. And whether the noise is continuous, interrupted, sudden or impulsive. So it depends on the type of noise. For example, if it is a DJ, sorry, if it is a DG, diesel generator, it is a continuous noise. If it is an interrupted, in case of any braking mission, what will happen? It is an interrupted noise. Or a sudden means any failure of the mission. Or impulsive. Impulsive will be continuous. If you see any uh, such kind of equipment, like previously in villages, we used to have the chili making powder machines. So it will be uh, beating the chilies on alternate manner. So that will be the impulsive. So it will be keep on generating and stopping. Like it's like a, a beeping sound. This is also one of the factor which will affect on or makes more hazardous. Whether ear protector is worn or not. And a ear protection is used chaser later. Whether he has been used uh, any ear plugs or ear muffs. Then individual susceptibility depending on the age and health. The individual susceptibility will be, uh, I can say, the strength of the person, the healthiness of the person, and also he is having any existing problems with respect to the uh, hearing or any other related issues. These are the various effects. One is frequency and also the intensity, total length of exposure, length of exposure, distance, type of noise, ear protection, and also the individual health. I can say, I can give a simple example called as resistance. We used to say that his uh, resistance is high. His resistance power is, or I can say instead of resistance, I can say immunity power uh, is an example. So his immunity power is high so that he won't get fallen sick on weather changes or any season changes. Then excessive noise harms overall health and may contribute to mental stress. If you are exposing with the heavy noise, it leads to uh, mental health, psychological uh, stress, and also certain illness, hearing loss or deafness, then it resulting in accidents and also reduce the labor productivity. These are the various health effects which will result in due to the exposure of high noise. Even if you don't know the people who are in effect mental psychological problems hearing loss hearing loss deafness is different deafness is it is completely zero you can't be able to hear anything and hearing loss will be he will lose the certain amount of decibels he can't able to hear only certain amount of volume or certain amount of dbs only he can able to hear or it may be resulting into accidents and also it will reduce the labor productivity as well even if you know maniki noise ke expose out of allah maniki jarge or manu kuchya samasar then already ill effects are two types one is temporary which is threshold hearing loss and also a permanent hearing loss, including a physical damage or ruptured eardrums. A noise cannot be returned at the source, and also its transmission is the environment cannot be prevented. Use the ear protection. So one is the altered ill effects of two types: temporary and permanent. Temporary will be it is for the certain amount of time for one hour or two hours or ten minutes. A permanent will be a lifetime. A permanent may be chances to happen a physical damage as well of your ruptured eardrum. So because of rupturing the eardrum, you can't able to hear the noise. Or I can say you will lose your hearing ability. Okay. If a noise cannot be reduced at the source. For example, here I have a source. Here I have a big speaker or a machine which is producing a more noise. So my people are working here. 
So if I can't able to reduce my noise at the source, so what do I do? This is how this noise will come and it will get exposed by employees. Or the transmission to the environment cannot be prevented, use the ear protection. For example, from the mission, you can't be able to do anything or you would have put any a noise absorbing or ecosystem to control the noise. This also you are not able to do it during transition. Then your people has to use the ear plugs so that they can protect themselves. One is we have to try to control at the source. And the generate out the Akada control and one transmission. Transmission in the sense transit. And the noise the noise and automatically sound generate in a blue. Adi and the chordaki spread out the And the path control If there also you are fail to do it, then you go for here. Production simple like similar manaki accident the hazard hierarchy control elimination substitution engineering control administrative control and PPs. Similar way here we will try for control at the source. If you are not able to control at the source, then we will go for uh, control at the transition. I mean where it is uh, spreading or where it is expanding or where it is uh, going. If there also you are unable to fail, then we will go for ear protection. Exposure to excessive noise rises our hearing threshold. That is the degree of loudness at which we uh, first begin to hear. So what will happen? It will increase our threshold. In the sense, for example, initially, I am able to hear even 70 decibels or 10 decibels. Once I have exposed with the, this exposure noise, high noises, what will happen? At least minimum 90 decibels only I can able to hear. Below this, I can't able to hear. It is called the threshold. Then auditory effect. What it is made by auditory effect in the sense hearing loss. These are a serious health hazards resulting in the hearing loss or a deafness. One is, as I mentioned, hearing loss, the hearing ability can be gradually reduced by a repeated or a long exposure to high noise and this permanent effect is known as noise induced hearing loss as if you see here it is a noise induced hearing loss is it in an occupational disease or not as per the heart reset is it occupational disease I am expecting answers. So, can you repeat the question, sir? Noise induced hearing loss. Is it a occupational disease or not? It may be occupational disease, sir, if uh, uh, the proper uh, procedure we are not followed means. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about others? Yes, sir, it is the uh, occupational issue, sir. Okay. Generally, if you see uh, Factory Act 1948, there uh, Schedule 3 is talking about, I think it is now to become 30 before it is 29 or 27. So there, they are talking about occupational ill health or occupational disease. Why it is called as occupational disease? Because of a specific person, they are working on or they are doing certain activity. To the result of that, they are getting injured or they are getting sick or they are becoming ill, those specific diseases are fall under occupational ill health or occupational disease. So in the sense, because of that specific activity, he has been got sick. 
So as per the Factors Act, noise induced hearing loss, which is also one of the occupational ill health. And while you have a Walaki Uchina Rogam. It is impairment in a ear or also obstruct the receipt of sound and also understanding of speech in a sentence from not in the form of test words. It is a deafness. It is impairment in the ear that obstructs the receipt of sound. डेफिनेशन so if you see here it is irreversible what is mean by irreversible what's the the damaged thing which can't be repaired again okay the damages cannot be i mean uh, the, took it back or put it back for example we lost one of our employee that is an irreversible damage to their family because they can't bring it bring him back so whatever the damage which has happened when you say irreversible we can't make it correct or if you lost your complete hand you can't bring in another hand and put it to you or you can bring the artificial but not the original one so brothers ir reversible whatever the audiometry the deafness the hearing disability it is an irreversible damage so you can't repair it but it can be cured by the some hearing aids hearing aids in the sense we use the people used to have the earphones for listening the noises or the audio audio aids so by using those audio aids in the sense the equipment they can able to hear us the ability to hear loss than normal speech indicates a degradation so degradation means the ability to hear the uh, less than the normal speech so apart from the normal speech you are not able to hear then that is called degradation in the sense your capability of hearing what damage degradation at enti taggi povatam ante mi yokka vinikidi shakti anedi taggi poyindi that is called degradation of your ability to hear ante vinikidi shakti anedi danni kol povadam ante melliga kol povadam it can be result in the aging long term exposure to high noises or from a sudden or very high intensive noise okay these are the various reasons due to the age also we will lose our ability due to the long term exposure also we we'll lose our ability and also uh, due to the uh, sudden impact of the noise also we used to lose our ability of hearing next the effects of chemicals on hearing loss are also be reported so there are certain chemicals which will leads to our hearing ability as well so exposed to certain chemicals like along with noise it is not directly affecting it is along with the noise it will result into reducing your hearing ability one is a tolin a lead mercury arsenic cs manganese and butyl alcohol trichloroethylene stearine etc etc these are the chemicals along with the noise which will leads to hearing loss and the ear can be protect itself to the some extent from the noise by means of reflex contraction of certain muscles in the middle ear with a uh, tires to the limit of energy being transmitted inside and this protection is of a little use when a sudden very loud noise strikes on ear causing muscle fatigue for a certain time 
whatever the internal muscles we have those muscles can able to manage of the the transmitted inside it will protect some extent to avoid the going the high noise to reach our eardrum but it will have a limited time so if in case of any sudden exposure with a loud noise it may get damage if the metal get fatigue in the sense the muscle itself it got like got lose their strength or it is exposed from heavy noises so that what will happen the strength of the muscle will go off so that it can't able to help us now we'll see what are the effects of degree and also the extent of hearing loss what are the factors which will affecting as we seen before one is the intensity of noise and also the type of noise and the period of exposure total working duration like the years of employment number of years he has been working in the same area or with the same uh, equipment and individual susceptibility it is about the the condition of the people or the person then age and, and the health of the workers then coexisting hearing losses so in case he is having any existing hearing loss some of the people by birth they will get hearing uh, problems then characteristics of the surroundings in which the noise is produced like characteristics will be the character will be what kind of atmosphere it is whether it is a dry wet or it is ventilated or it is closed room or it is in an open area then distance from the noise then position of the ear with respect to the sound waves and also uh, wearing ear protection so one is ear protection and also the position of the ear whether you are directly impacted or if the source is here whether you are somewhere else and also the first four factors are called noise exposure factors and are more important if you see here these four are more important with respect to the the factors which is affecting one is intensity type of noise it is a continuous impulse etc and period of exposure how many uh, days or hours or years is exposed and also total working duration now we'll see what is the signs and also symptoms and what your lakshana lady hearing loss your lakshana ringing in the ear this is the one of the symptom you can see people used to say that oh, something is happening in my ear there is a sound which is happening there is a beep sound which is happening or which is uh, i'm able to hear a beep sound continuously work shift and also headache the tiredness and also dizziness then intermittent ringing like in between you are hearing some uh, ringing or telephone ringing or some beep sounds then normal hearing is affected if the background noise is present and also incapability of picking up of conversation or cannot hear the tickling clock ticking clock in the sense sometimes if you see our old days we used to have a wall clocks when you are sleeping in the night we can able to hear the the ticking sound of a wall clock and feeling of uh, hearing insufficiency in main face so you are feeling that you are not able to hear them properly that is insufficiently your hearing you are not able to understand the conversation these are the various signs of hearing loss whenever you are have this kind of signs you can better check immediately then hearing loss of uh, two types as we seen before one is a temporary and permanent they are also classified as uh, conductive and sensorial and also mixed hearing loss if you see a temporary loss can be caused by exposure to the loud noise for up to a few hours it is for temporary just for one hour two hour or three hours it is for a few hours the temporary hearing loss will be few hours which the numbers the hair cells fortunately hearing is usually restored after a period of away from the noise so whatever the hair cells inside the cochlea it will get restored 
after some time, you will be able to hear properly. The permanent hearing loss occurs when exposure to a loud noise permanently damage, permanently damage or destroys the hair cells. It will be resulting into hearing loss. It cannot be restored. Once the hair cells got damaged completely, you can't restore your ability of hearing. If you see a signs of permanent hearing loss, one is inability to hear a pitched or soft sounds, which means a normal conversation also. A trouble in understanding conversation, like general discussions also, he is not able to understand. A ringing or roaring in the ears, some thickness, some deep sounds are continuously you are able to listen or you are able to hear in your ears. That is the roaring in the ears. These are the symptoms of permanent hearing loss. An inability to hear a pitched or soft sound. Even here you will lose your complete ability. You can't hear anything. And we can the benefits of the situation. Hearing loss is a notifiable disease. These are the notifiable occupational disease. As I mentioned, it is a notifiable occupational disease. A noise-induced hearing loss exposure to high noise levels is a notifiable disease under third schedule of the factory sand.